Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another Magic Arena Explorer video. So today we are playing some Is It Prowess. So this is not dissimilar in strategy to the Boros Heroic deck that we were playing the other day. So this is about cheap creatures which grow when you cast non-creature spells, and then just trying to uh, aggro out the opponents. So we've got a couple... well we have one interesting new card for this deck, which is Fugitive Codebreaker. So this is a 2-1 two, for 2 with Prowess and Haste, so it's a kind of probably slightly worse Monastery Swift Spear just off the bat, but it also has Disguise for 5 and a red, so you can play it as a 2-2 two, two with War 2 for 3 generic mana, um, and then flip it uh, face up for 5 and a red, although this cost is reduced by 1 for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. And when it's turned face up, you discard your hand, then draw 3 cards, so it's got that kind of Ox of Agonis effect. Um, so yeah, this is a good kind of two-drop that we can play early in the game, but if the game goes long, then we can potentially disguise it and refuel our hand as well. Um, obviously it has prowess, so it grows from uh, casting our non-creature spells, just like Monastery Swiss Spear does. And then we also have four copies of Sprite Dragon, um, which is uh, used to be a bit of a staple. Um, not Doesn't see so much play anymore, but we thought we'd bring it back. Um, so it's blue-red for a 1-1 one, one with flying and haste, and whenever you cast it on non creature spell, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, so it has the kind of permanent prowess. And then one copy of Balmore Battle Mage Captain, um, which is a 1-3 flying for two, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and gain trample, so it has that kind of uh, broader pump effect across the entire team. And then the rest of the deck is just uh, cheap instants and sorcery, so you recognize a number of these. So we've got four copies of Consider and four Sleight of Hand, so those are our kind of one mana blue cantrips. We have a Behind the Mask, which is a new card, um, one that we can uh, turn any artifact or creature we have into... Uh, 4-3, or if we particularly want to collect evidence, then we can uh, turn an opponent's creature into a 1-1, one, one. so it has a kind of dual effect there, um, so an interesting new one which we'll uh, we'll have a go with. Um, one copy of Shore Up, so just where protecting our creatures. Crash Through, which is just gives all our creatures trample but draws us a card. And then we have four Command and Faces Kakazan, so we'll recognise this from... Um, mainly the mono red deck, so a very powerful one mana saga which pings the opponent when it enters the battlefield. Then chapter two gives you a, uh, a plus one plus one counter on the next creature you cast, so a code breaker or a sprite dragon uh, that's very effective as a kind of one two uh, starting in, in the game. And then the third chapter it flips into the etchings of Kamano, which is a two two creature. And then we've got monstrous rage, so it we saw this in Boros Heroic, so uh, plus two plus oh until end of turn, and also create a monster roll token attached to it, so this is a very good way of just kind of hitting the opponent for six, eight damage out of nowhere. Um, and then four copies of Play With Fire as a good removal spell that can target the opponent as well as, uh, as well as their creatures and planeswalkers, and then give us a little bit of scry value as well. And then we are running one copy of Treasure Cruise just so that we can... Uh, delve away some of these cards which go into our graveyard, refuel our hand similarly to how the code breaker works and just keep the keep the train rolling. Then we've got 20 lands, so 16 dual lands, um, all of them all of which can come into play untapped on turn one, which is kind of what we want. Um, a Sokanzan and an Ottawara as our utility lands, and then a Den of the Bugbear as well, and one basic mountain. Sideboard, so we are running Gigantha, like we seem to be in a lot of a lot of decks at the moment. So we do have Gigantha um, as our companion. A couple of fading hopes just to give us some tempo uh, advantage over the opponent, uh, or also potentially potentially protect our own creatures. Another shore up for the same reason. Spell Pierce uh, and Mystical Dispute, just a couple of counter spells. Then we have a Rending Volley to uh, destroy uh, blue and white creatures. Alpine Moon um, to shut down things like Lotus Field. Um, there's another Rending Volley there, actually. Uh, oh, my sideboard's gone. Got all weird, never mind. End the festivities, so this just knocks down uh, cheap creatures that the opponents uh, might play, so particularly effective against elves, creatures like Bor uh, decks like Boros Convoke, and then we have some rampaging Frostodons just to shut down opponents from gaining any life, um, and also ping them if they're looking to go wide with creatures as well. So yeah, fairly self-explanatory. Play creatures, make them bigger, attack the opponent. Uh, so yeah, is it prowess? Let's see how these new cards do. So thank you very much for watching. As ever, hit those like and subscribe buttons, and yeah, let's go on to the ladder. Hey 
good day. We had a little bit of a weird thing going on there. But I think we're now in the game. So the opponent's playing some sort of Rakdos deck, so let's just start buffing up our creatures. Okay, they're playing the Vampire's deck, fair enough. Let's see if they have the combo. Okay, it is not a Vein Ripper. That is good news. So, let's play Fugitive Codebreaker. Um. Yeah, let's just take down Sorin here. Pass the turn. Sure. Okie dokie, so they get the 1-1. One, one. We take 2. Play with fire is pretty good, so... Let's take down their Goblin Shaman token. Send the creatures at them. May as well pop Gigantha in our hand. Ooh. No discard, eh? Defeating you will not bring me pleasure. Nor pain. Okay, they do have a vein ripper now. Do I have any decent answers to this? Not at the moment. I'll take down their Sorin anyway. Games bore me. Let's see if I can bait them into losing their Vein Ripper. Nope. Okay, well, I have to be a little careful here because otherwise they're super dead. So let's channel Sokanzan. Could do without losing my behind the mask here. But at least it costs them two life, I suppose. Hmm, that is not what I would do. Interesting. I don't think, yeah, you don't lose anything, but mm, yeah, I think attacking with that creature is the right thing to do. Hmm. Okay, well, that's a good start. I think we either win this turn or we don't win at all, so...
So I think let's attack with everything. So, we are currently presenting to three damage. So this should this should work. Yep. Marvelous. Okay, we defeated the Sorin plus Vein Ripper combo there. That's pretty good. Um, so I quite fancy Rampaging Frostodon in this matchup. Uh, Fading Hope is a good way of getting rid of a Vein Ripper if we absolutely have to. Spell Pierce. Shore Up's pretty good. Okay, seven cuts, seven cuts. Um, play with Fire's decent. Crash through did quite a lot of work there, didn't it? Um, maybe Frostodon isn't right on the draw, actually. No, let's take that out again. Um, just, and I think I will get rid of Crash through. We'll just keep it like this. That was not bad, considering. Um, we didn't have the best opening hand. This is a good one, though. So. This looks like a strong keep to me. We have Spell Pierce for... Sorin. Okay. Kamano faces Kakazan, it is. Now, let's play Swift Spear. And hold up Spell Pierce. Yep. Now we'll play a Sprite Dragon. Um, do I want to play with Fire the opponent? I think we can here. Just get some more damage off. No, don't need another land. Now, hopefully they won't have two Sorens. Interesting. Well, let's open with a sleight of hand. Let's take this for next turn if we need it, I think. Let's put the onus on the opponent to have something here. I am waiting. Oh, this better not be me again.
And it is. I don't know why the connection is so bad at the moment. Hang on a sec. Okay, and we're back. Sure thing. Okay. Despite two dropout of connections, we were able to win that match. Take that to the bank. Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully the game will work now. would politely suggest to Wizards of the Coast that if they want people to take their game seriously, it should probably function at least vaguely consistently. Okay, so the opponent's probably on Gruul Ataka, I reckon this is. So it's not a dissimilar to deck, deck to what we're doing. Yes, yes, use up your life total. Yep, just cast lots of cheap things. Alright, let's stick a Kumano faces Kakazan into play. Do some sleight of handing. Grab a Spire Bluff Canal. Okay, let's do an outrageous amount of damage. Okay, so they're running Breakout, that makes sense. No, they can't use that Coplucent Forest for any coloured mana, which is slightly unfortunate, to be honest. Okay. I think this will probably do us. Pop that one in the bin. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, you're not, uh, not getting out of that one. So, what to so say? The opponent has kind of gruel aggro. Um, so I think shore up seems a decent bet here. Fading hope is probably okay as well. And we'll ditch Treasure Cruise on the draw. Get rid of Behind the Mask and maybe just a sleight of hand. I think that's fine. I don't think it needs a huge amount of change. Being on the play is obviously great here. Um, yeah, I mean, if we draw into some decent spells, it's pretty good. Yep, that's a good start, so...
So we can play Balmore as a 2-4 next turn, which seems pretty decent. Sure thing. We haven't tried this card actually yet, Breakout. I think we should probably give it a go at some point. Yeah, play with fire is going to be good in a minute, so... We're about to absolutely flood the board, so... Ah, Reckless Rage is a good answer to Balmol. Yep. Okay, let's have one Swift Spear into another Swift Spear into Kill Your Swift Spear. Now let's take the fight to them, I think. Soul Scar Mage, not Swift Spear. I've had Swift Spears on the mind, as I so often do. Send one of those back to their hand. Goodbye. Ooh, sure up's a decent draw. Um, I will send in the swift spears here, but not the etching. Very good. Come to me, Gigantha. itself isn't very threatening. Um, so I might just play a 5-5 five five here, to be honest. Then pass the turn, just style it out. I think the 5-5 five five will hold off anything they can do for the time being. Then if we can draw another cheap spell to go with Shore Up, we're probably looking quite pretty. The opponent's flooding out a little. Mm, that is a good cheap spell. Okay. Let's go. They might have collected company. I don't know. I don't know what this deck's playing. It's a little different to uh, a Gruul Aggro deck I've seen before. Sure, well, let's protect that with Shore Up. I think this probably wins us the game. Yep. Indeed it does. Okay, very good. Oh, this is a horrendously risky keep, but you know what? We're here to make mistakes. It all works out for the best. Take another Kumar who faces Kakazan. Can never have too many of those. Oh, vampires. 
higher law. I admit. My heart is too hollow to care. Decided I'm just going to go for it. Commando hitting planeswalkers is not often the something is not often something that uh, has a big effect, but certainly very welcome in this situation. So monastery fist spear. Uh, sadly, I am going to have to kill that. Oh, this is going to be a close one. <laughs> It's a risky business. Okay, I think Codebreaker is the better play here, just because it has more power than Sprite Dragon. So, I mean, we either win now or we die, so... I think we should be able to win from here. If they don't have Fatal Push, we should be able to win from here. Okay, so once again we overcame the turn three Sorin into Vein Ripper. Um, so on the draw, let's do our sideboarding as we did last time. Again, Frosted on maybe on the play. Not on the draw. Commander face Skakazan hitting Planeswalkers there was surprisingly relevant, and often you don't see that uh, that coming into uh, being 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 a useful thing, but uh, sometimes it is. Okay, that's good, so let's have a swift spear. Play sleight of hand, I think is decent here. Have another land. As much as I would like a code breaker, I think land is probably better. No sorry, no so yay. Marvelous. Okay, let's get rid of that. Now we'll stick a monstrous rage on our swift spear. Hmm. 
Now we have Shore up to protect it. Vampires indeed. Sure thing. Okay, we go again. <laughs> mm, that's not ideal. So let's start with consider. No. Now that is very much ideal. Well, I'm going to try and kill you this turn, so... Oh dear. What a shame. This is really not the time for the server to go down again. I don't know what's wrong with the game. Honestly, if you want if you want people to take your game seriously, I would uh, suggest that it needs to stop doing this. Now, I should just win from here, but hold on a sec. Okay, and indeed we did win from there. So I'm going to stop now because the, get, the client is clearly having an absolute fit um, today. So we will uh, we will leave it there. But that was Is It Prowess, quite impressive stuff. Um, just your classic take out the opponent as quickly as possible. It did well there against vampires, was able to overcome the Vein Ripper um, just by kind of getting out, outclassing it in combat, which uh, this deck can sometimes do, so that was pretty good. Um, so yeah, here's the deck list one more time. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, hit those like and subscribe buttons. I'll see you next time.